Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a new Lawrence and Lee fantasy with music, Miss Cinderella, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another delightful musical first is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Dorothy Warren Scholl and I bring you a musical fable, Miss Cinderella. This is a story of a girl I met who changed my whole life. We've get this, the story of Cinderella. When did Cinderella happen exactly? In the dim days of yesteryear or just last week? I don't know. After all, we still have pumpkins, princes, fancy dress balls. Although I must say the glass slipper craze is kind on the wane. That's why I keep asking myself this question. When was once upon a time When were ladies always fair When did love songs always rhyme And when was magic Upon a time began in McCloskey's shoe store. 
And I was waiting on a customer. I'd, I'd like a pair of shoes, exactly like the ones I have on, size 4, double A. Well, frankly, miss, I can't tell the style. These are rather worn down. I suppose you think I don't have any better shoes to wear. Well, after all, I'm Lucinda Brown, the well-known woman novelist. Oh? Is that one of your own books you have there? No. Oh, oh please don't look at that. Well, Cinderella. I was just reading it for research. Oh, well, let's see what we can find for you in the way of shoes. Now, let me see. Uh, you know, it isn't every day I get to try a shoe on a well-known novelist. Well, uh, I'm not really such a well-known novelist. Not yet, anyway. Ah, but you will be. I'm sure of it. You've got a light inside you. A light? Mm-hmm. It shines right out of your eyes. And I have a hunch that you could be anything you wanted to be. All you have to do is, well, make a wish. A wish? Mm-hmm. Wishing will make it so. Just keep on wishing and care will go. Dreamers tell us dreams come true. It's no mistake and wishes are the dreams. Fellas around the store call me Joe. Joe. <laughs> Here, try this for size. Four double A. Well, they're very nice shoes. And a bargain, too. Six dollars and forty cents. Six dollars? But they used to be only three something. Well, that's the price. Well, I would sooner go barefoot than give you the six dollars and forty cents for this ratty pair of Oxfords. And when my name is mentioned in the same breath with Ernest Hemingway, I assure you that both of us will take our shoe business elsewhere. Good day. Ah, uh, Miss Brown. You're still wearing one of our ratty Oxfords. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, oh, dear. It's not raining. Yeah, afraid it is. Your feet will get soaked in these old shoes. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr... Joe. Joe, I had a story I was sure they'd buy for Real Romances magazine, but they didn't. The editor says they want sordid realism. And everything I write seems to come out like Cinderella. Oh, so that's why you're reading it. Well, I've got to find out why I'm, what I'm writing wrong so I can write something right <laughs> instead of subconsciously stealing from Cinderella. Tell me, couldn't I buy just one shoe? Well, I, I don't think... You that, see, uh, I think I can just about make $3.20. But we can't break up a pair. Here, take the money. Now, just a minute, just a minute, You're Miss Brown. nice, Joe. Goodbye. Hey! Hey, come back with that shoe! Lucinda Brown, you're a thief. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You steal shoes and stories. You haven't even paid the rent on this silly little cold water walk-up apartment. Well, maybe I'll find something in this book to cheer me up. The story of Cinderella. mother and two stepsisters, Gisela and Bella. They made her fetch and carry and do all the drudgery around the house. Cinderella? Yes, stepmother. Did you bring in the wood and sweep the mat? 
polish the floor and feed the cat. Yes. Sew the plume on your sister's hat. I'm sorry, I didn't have time for that. Don't stand there as if you were nailed to the floor. Wish someone's knocking. Go answer the door. His Majesty's ball. Oh, the Prince of the Kingdom, how purely divine. The music commences quite promptly at nine. His Majesty asks you to RSVP. Please tell him that we have responded, Merci. Oh, may I go to the ball, stepmother? <laughs> we cannot be bothered by poor Cinderella's who think they're entitled to dress just as well as their sisters, who never do housework at all. Now hurry up, girl. We'll be late for the ball. I wish, oh, I wish that I... another, but you never would guess. I'm your fairy godmother. Oh, but enough of this chit-chat and sociable chinning. Why do you cry when you ought to be grinning? a double poo-poo. I know positively a plan that will do. Now stand very tall on the tips of your toes. We'll see what my magic can do for your clothes. I'll flourish my wand with a fiddle-dee-dee, abracadabra, and ETC. Oh, who's that in the looking glass? That's you, little cinder girl. Dress for the ball. I noticed a pumpkin you saved for a pie. I'll make it a coach in the blink of an eye. You don't have to believe it. Just climb in and ride. Now my wand will invite a few magical forces to alter these mice into six prancing horses. Oh, how beautiful. One thing, fairy godmother, is it discreet to dance at a ball with no shoes on my feet. I'll give you some footwear that none can surpass to exquisite slippers of crystalline glass. This splendor in gold and blue You've made all my wishes completely come true Wishing has made it so By merely wishing that you could go 
morning, my child. Yes, Holy Godmother. The magic will last until midnight. And your gown will be tatters and patches again. Your horses and coachman and carriage, my dear, at the twelfth stroke of midnight will all disappear. I leave the palace before midnight, I promise you. And thank you for making all my wishes come true. for the second act of Miss Cinderella in just a moment. A homeward-bound automobile hums along a country highway. Off to the side is a railroad track. Over this highway of steel roars an approaching freight. Well, son, here comes one of your favorite sights. Oh, swell. Oh, boy, look at all those cars. I wonder what's in there. They carry just about everything. Why, they even haul automobiles, just like the one we're riding in. That's right. Freight trains do carry complete automobiles, but they do more than that. For they transport the parts that go into your car to the assembly line that puts it together. And they haul the materials that make up those parts from forest, mill, mine, and factory. In short, America's railroad tracks, running from one end of the nation to the other, are an integral portion of one huge assembly line. An assembly line that brings together all the parts and materials that are built into the car you drive. But the railroad's job in making your car possible does not stop at the automobile assembly plant, for they continue their task by hauling hundreds of thousands of finished cars to cities and towns all over the country. And although you may not have thought of it this way, the railroads go right on contributing to the enjoyment and safety with which you operate your car. For over their tracks, the railroads handle the vast bulk of the nation's freight traffic between cities actually handle more than all other forms of transportation combined. And the more of America's freight that moves over the steel highways, which the railroads built and keep up, the less is the damage done to the public highways by heavy freight movements. And the greater will be your satisfaction and safety every time you drive your car. Here is Act Two of the new Lawrence and Lee play with music, Miss Cinderella, starring Gordon MacRae and Dorothy Warren Scholl, with special music composed by Carmen Dragon. While the rain pours down outside the window of her little walk-up flat, Lucinda Brown is curled up in her bed, wearing one old shoe and one new. She is reading with deep attention not one of her own stories, which nobody ever buys, but the story of Cinderella. At the royal palace, Cinderella climbed the great spiral staircase, and when she entered the ballroom, everything stopped. <gasps> All the guests in my ballroom were speechless with awe At the lovely and delicate princess they saw The princess for her part seemed just as impressed For I'd never seen people so fancily dressed There were elegant earls and debonair dukes Sporting the latest in powdered perukes Baronets, coronets Princesses, crowns, the Marquesa's smiles And the dowager's frowns I caught just a glimpse of Gisela and Bella Who never suspected their maid Cinderella Had blossomed so bravely from cinders and shyness Oh look, that must be the young prince Then 
she sank to her knees in a curtsy of loyalty. Exactly what young girls should do before royalty. Good evening. Good evening, Your Highness. May I have the pleasure of this dance with you? I shall be deeply honored, Your Highness. Let the music commence. You all so divinely, I'm glad that you came. Though I'm sorry to say that I don't know your name. Oh dear, for this evening I think I must pass as the princess whose slippers are made out of glass. Describe how sublime it is, but tell me, I beg you, exactly what time it is. It's ten after ten, and until the tune halts, the princess and I will continue to walk. I trust you're not tired. It is perfectly heaven, but what is the time? Why, it's scarcely eleven. Come dance and romance with me, love of the last little princess whose slippers are made out of glass. What's this? Just the clock in the top of the tower. Striking twelve. Why so frightened of midnight? The hour and the star. God be with you. And thank you for all of the gladness and glory I've had at the war. Wait, wait, little princess. My slipper. Come back, little princess. Come back. I can't understand why my princess has fled. And here in the road, there's an old pumpkin head. And some mice and a lizard that scamper away. And one tiny slipper, size four double Why, Your Highness, you honor us with this visit. Thank you. Dear ladies, were you present at the ball last night? Yes, indeed. Of course we were there. We were there. This little glass slipper was dropped on the stair And the princess who wore it delighted my eyes But she's quite disappeared, would you try it for size? For the girl who can wear it will dance at my side My beautiful, dutiful princess and bride Pull your toes together and make the shoe fit. All right, Mother. Oh. Harder, harder. I'm sorry, dear Mother. My foot just won't go in. The slipper's so tiny, I can't get my toe in. Then, my other dear angel, you must do it, please. Fold up your arches, Gisela, and squeeze. <laughs> Sorry, dear ladies, this squeezing won't do. If the shoe fits the foot, then the foot fits the shoe. These are all of the ladies in the house, I trust. There's our maid, but she'd cover you over with dust. Even so, my dear lady, I think I should try this shoe on her foot. Not a chance must slip by. She sleeps in a room at the top of the stairs. With your kindest permission, I'll look for her there. And so the prince climbed the steep stairs to the garret room where Cinderella slept, and he knocked on the door. Miss Brown! Lucinda? Oh, but I'm just coming to the best part of the story. I've got something for you. It's Joe from McCloskey's shoe store. Oh, oh, excuse me, Joe. Hello. Come in. You know, 
You know, the funniest thing, I was reading Cinderella where the prince comes to try the glass slipper on her foot. Well, he knocks on the door, and just then, you knocked. Well, I, I don't have a glass slipper, but I do have a shoe that you can see right through. How did you find me? Just like the prince in your story, from your shoe. Look. Oh, the rejection slip from Real Romances magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, I stuffed that inside my shoe to keep my stocking off the sidewalk. Well, it's lucky the editor had your address on it. You see, I wanted to give you the other new shoe. Oh, but you can't. You'll get in trouble with Mr. McCloskey. Miss Brown, I have some news for you. I am Mr. McCloskey. No. Junior. <laughs> Seems to me that you ought to stop writing Cinderella stories, because it's a lot more fun living them. How do I do that? Just to point me your private and personal Prince Charming is all. Well, you know... I was beginning to think that stories like Cinderella were strictly once upon a time. But uh, I guess a girl can still find a Prince Charming nowadays. <laughs> Even in a shoe store, huh? And you never can tell how a thing like this will wind up. Oh, yes, you can. These stories always end the same way. Mm-hmm. And they lived happily ever after. Cinderella, lovely Dorothy Warrensville, will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our hearty thanks to Elvia Allman, Verna Felton, June Foray, Isabel Jewell, and to our entire company. Miss Cinderella was an original musical play by Lawrence and Lee, who also wrote the lyrics to the lovely Cinderella music, composed especially by our own Carmen Dragon. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? The average freight car you see on the railroads is big and heavy. It's built that way to do the big, tough transportation job that America's vast production demands. To accommodate these cars, the railroads, with their own money, have built and maintained their own heavy-duty highways of steel. And over these tracks moves the bulk of America's freight, freight that might otherwise further crowd the highways over which you drive your car. Well, Gordon, to what magic land of make-believe are we traveling next Monday night? Dorothy, we're staying in the fantasy mood, but we're coming right down to earth. Our story is fantasy impromptu, and as you might guess, it's a story of Chopin. Uh, Chopin, I think it is. I forgot to ask the maestro. Set to the memorable music of that great composer. <laughs> Meet you in Mallorca next Monday, Gordon. Okay, Dorothy, and bring your umbrella. Good night. Good night. You were certainly an enchanting Cindy and Cinderella. All aboard. Well, friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night and Fantasy Impromptu, this is Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff. Our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Oh.